Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications. Until recently, when you passed by the western banks of Staten Island, you would find a 50-acre dumping ground. Visitors to the area would be treated to a landscape of brackish water, tires, abandoned vehicles, lumps of unknown metal and concrete, and more unsightly rubbish. For many years, this post-industrial wasteland was ignored, until a novel new bank stepped in to help. But this was not a bank out of Wall Street. Rather, it was a partnership between the New York City Parks Department and the nonprofit New York City Economic Development Corporation. Together, these two organizations created a wetlands mitigation bank. And what was the result? I'll let you know at the end of this video. But first, I bring up the New York City Wetlands Mitigation Bank because it is one wetlands mitigation strategy that is used by developers who wish to develop properties on wetlands. So if you own a property that has wetlands on it, here are some of the top things you should know about wetlands mitigation. Number one, wetlands mitigation involves the restoration, creation, or enhancement of wetlands. And while this has a natural benefit on its own, the primary goal is to compensate it for permitted losses of wetlands elsewhere. Number two, mitigation is required when you need a wetlands permit from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. So just for some background here, under the Clean Water Act, any activities that significantly impact a wetland are not allowed unless a permit is received from the Army Corps of Engineers. And typically, in order to obtain this permit, you will need to mitigate any significant impacts you have on a wetland. Now, activities that have a significant impact involve just about any kind of construction activity. So not just construction itself, but also filling a wetlands, draining it, leveling it, clearing vegetation, and diverting runoff water. Number three, there are different ways that you can mitigate any significant impacts you have on a wetlands. The first is to restore wetlands elsewhere on your site. And this type of mitigation involves the rehabilitation of a historic wetland to return it to its natural function. You can also enhance wetlands elsewhere on your site or another site that you own. And this type of mitigation involves enhancing or improving an existing wetland. For example, adding nesting boxes to bring back a specific species of bird. And finally, there's creation. This is the most costly kind of mitigation, but this involves creating a wetland in a location that has not held one in the recent past. Number four, you can also opt for offsite mitigation. So perhaps you don't have room on your site or the expertise to undertake one of the three prior mitigation activities yourself in which case there are often off-site options. So the first option would be to buy credits from a mitigation bank. A mitigation land bank is a wetland that has been restored or created by a third party for the purpose of compensating for unavoidable impacts to wetlands elsewhere. The other option is an in-lieu fee mitigation. This is very similar to mitigation banking, but Instead of buying credits associated with a large wetlands that has already been created by a third-party land bank, you simply pay a fee to a third party, and this is usually a governmental party, in lieu of conducting a mitigation project yourself. The money from all of these fees is then pooled to create a wetland elsewhere. Number five, mitigation banks provide entrepreneurial opportunities. So mitigation banks are not only helpful for landowners they also provide a great opportunity for entrepreneurs because a wetlands bank can be a for-profit enterprise if you are able to sell your credits for more than it costs to restore, enhance, or create the wetlands on the bank. And if you have any interest in starting a wetlands mitigation bank yourself, the steps include identifying a market opportunity, so an area where there may be a lot of need on the part of developers to buy wetlands mitigation credits. You'll then have to acquire land in order to restore, enhance, or create a wetlands. You'll draft a plan for your wetlands bank and get approval from the interagency review team in your area. Now, the interagency review team varies from location to location, but it's usually a team of different state agencies along with the Army Corps of Engineers. 
You'll then get the regular permits from the Army Corps of Engineers and the relevant state environmental agency in order to undertake your restoration, creation, or enhancement activities. Now you're often able to pre-sell some credits to help fund the actual restoration work. Then you complete the restoration and sell the remaining credits. And once all the credits are sold, the bank is closed out and hopefully you have made your profit. But this talk of wetlands mitigation banks brings us back to Staten Island's Sawmill Creek. Restoration efforts for 54 acres were recently wrapped up and the mitigation bank is currently selling its credits. Through the restoration efforts, workers removed 40,000 cubic yards of debris, including 522 cubic yards of tires. That's over 1,000 dumpsters worth of debris. And these restoration efforts were funded by the income generated by pre-selling credits. The profit from the remaining credits is expected to generate additional funds for a phase two project. So the city gets a return on its investment and also a new functioning wetland system to help protect the surrounding community from future storm surges. Isn't it fascinating what we can accomplish with some creativity? Now, do you have any stories about wetland mitigation or mitigation banks? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a land due diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com slash glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down properties at gokchecapital.com slash listings. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening, and more to come. Thank you.